in five, four, three, two, one, and we are live. Welcome to another episode of Sound Booth Theater Live. My name is Justin Thomas James, and I am here with author extraordinaire Jamie Hawk. Hello. And of course, <laughs> sorry. Wait, the who the hell is this? The contrast between the sizes of, of oh the of, of you guys. Hello. Hi. Was I quiet or loud? Which you're one? quiet. You were quiet. And it was just. It was brilliant. It was perfect. <laughs> you just like destroyed all the wind in his sails and yep, uh all of it i loved it. I, I loved it i had the entire intro planned i had this <laughs> section slotted out for you jamie where you were gonna do this amazing hello and you were gonna jump in through the ceiling smash a window <laughs> rip your shirt off scream like a dinosaur um like a pterodactyl pterodactyl <laughs> Maybe my mic was just quiet. Maybe I was too far away from it. No, no, <laughs> no it, it was, was just perfect. a very meek, like friendly <laughs> hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah, I got you. And who the fuck is this guy calling us out and judging our intros? <laughs> who is this giving us West Side, East Side? <laughs> I'm from both sides. That's I'm, uh oh that's I'm, oh I'm, I know who that is. I'm a gang centrist. Oh yeah, you're <laughs> <laughs> everybody forgets about center coast rappers um uh, that's jeff hayes um narrator and uh sound booth theater dude and uh yeah what are we doing what are we, what are we doing here today we're doing something kind of special we are doing our very first sound booth theater live uh supers x heroes audiobook code giveaway Say that five times fast. Um, yeah, um, we're giving away some audiobooks. Uh, what was that? Sorry, what? Are you falling asleep, Jeff? Don't Maybe. fall asleep. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, so um, we, uh, Sound Booth Theater and Harem Gamelet, Jamie Hawk, are teaming up to uh, just spread some love and show our appreciation to our fantastic community. Um, every group that I just mentioned, uh, whether you're just a fan of Jamie Hawk on his page, fan of SBT, a member of Harem Gamelet, you guys are fantastic. We, we really care about you guys. And, um, we also, uh, wanted to announce that Supers 3, if you are a fan of Jamie Hawk, you've probably been paying attention to the drama that is surrounding Supers 3. Um, Shimmer's voice was missing, but it's not anymore. Uh, we've fixed it. So, uh, thank you guys very much for uh, leaving your reviews and letting us know that there was an issue. Um, also a particular thank you to the very first person who, I guess, blew the whistle and let us know that there was a problem, uh, messaged Jamie on Facebook. And uh, we're actually going to give away our very first code of the night to uh, this this very positive whistleblower. Can and we, can we give one extra code to him? Like ha give him a sixth code and then oh. still give five codes away? A hundred percent. A hundred. Wait, wait, how many, wait, what is our uh, code currency? I guess code. Yeah, we do have a limited amount of codes. We can definitely do that though. Okay. We can definitely do that. So we are going to give a code to a uh, drum roll. Keep going. I'm scrolling. Keep going. Don't fall asleep. It becomes snore. <laughs> Here we go. Roman Rodriguez. We are going to be sending you, Roman Rodriguez, if you're watching this. If you're not watching this, let him know. We're going to send him a code and we're going to send it over Facebook. Um, so, uh, if you get a request for, um, one of us three to talk to you, um, we're not stalkers where we're just trying to get you a code, but we actually are stalkers and this is how we do it. Yeah. And we should request that he always watches all of our streams and listens to all audiobooks in case there is an issue. So you can let us know. Yes. Listen to all of our audiobooks, And then, no, actually, I mean, this mistakes happen things happen like this and it's it's really really good to know 
as quickly as possible. And I think it was like the morning it was released that uh, he commented. So it was like quick as a whip. So thank you very much, Roman Rodriguez, for uh, being right on top of that. And um, you're going to get a code. Now, I will mention that these codes are for audible.com. They're they're just going to give you a credit. So technically, you can use them on any book that you like. And uh, we're not going to stop you from that. Um, if you do, we do encourage you to spend them on one of our books on a Sound Booth Theater live bo- or Sound Booth Theater book or a Jamie Hawk book. But if you are so inclined to spend it on something else, all the power to you. Right, Jeff? Yes. Now, doesn't Audible send out an email that says they're not allowed to or supposed to use it on certain kinds of books? I thought I saw an email about that, but anyway. Um you are not supposed to use them on books about how to be an effective terrorist. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> yeah. That's probably what the email said. Probably. Which you might actually be able to pick that up in these supers books. Uh, Don't tell people. You know? I mean, if you have powers. Well, yeah. Yeah. You need superpowers. <laughs> yeah. uh, a harem Google. of badass superpowered women. Yeah. Um, you need just a lot go, of things. You just go down to Target to get those things, though. That's true. That's true. Target? Really? We don't have those in Canada. Target. Really? Sorry. <laughs> Target. Ah, wee, wee, wee. Oh, just say. Okay. So throughout the week, uh, we've been posting uh, about this giveaway, and uh, we've been inviting you guys to share your favorite uh, scenes from the Super series. And um, we're going to start narrating. We've got three scenes already. And if you suggested a scene, you're getting a code. If you suggest a scene and we narrate it, then you're going to get a code. So obviously, math-wise, we're going to be narrating five scenes today, and giving we're giving away five codes. And then afterwards, if you know we've still got some time, we'll just do some more scenes for fun. If you guys have any suggestions, um, but yeah, we're going to get started right away. How does that sound? Yay! All right. So the first scene that is popping up is uh, coming from book three. And actually, before I say any more, if there were still two codes that are unspoken for. So, Jamie, if you are able to Mm -hmm. um, keep an eye on the chat, or or actually, you know what? The Harem Gamelet, you have just posted... Uh, live now with three, two, one. Yeah. Um, in that thread at the top of the harem gamelet group, if you're not a member of the harem gamelet group, go ahead and join that. Um, but leave, if you have a suggestion for a favorite scene that you would like to hear narrated tonight, leave a comment in there. And if Jamie picks your scene, then you are going to get a code. And like I said, there are two codes that are unspoken for currently. Um, so gotta be fast. I just put it as an fast. announcement so it'll stay at the top. So and then I'll unannounce it after that or something if that's possible. Oh yeah. Excellent. Uh okay, so yeah, Jeff, the first scene that we're gonna be uh, narrating in is from book three. And uh this contains some spoilers. So if you haven't read past book three, um well do that right now. I'll give you 10 seconds. Yeah, hurry, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Oh, yeah. and, and Christopher Lee then, just joined. I imagine he's listening, so that's cool. Welcome, Christopher. Chris. Oh, welcome. Um, yeah, the, so we're going to read that. Oh, by the way, favorite super scene that you guys share, make sure it's from books one to three, because I haven't read book oh, four yet. So could be from one and two. That's awesome. Could be from one and two. Yeah. Uh, and we are doing one scene tonight from two. Uh, we have actually narrated it in another SBT, but... We'll we'll get to that later. So first scene is um fuck. What happened to my notes? Oh, that's super stew. Bear with me, guys. This is my first time. I've never done this before. I'd like to take this moment to call out Robert Smith for being late. Robert Smith was late. Yes, he was again. Yes, Robert C. Smith. Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> he didn't put his middle name in, in the YouTube uh, name. Uh-huh. I have my ways of referencing all these people in my brain. And like for some reason, the initial has to be there. 
Okay. And now my Kindle isn't working. Keep talking amongst yourself. Um, okay. <laughs> Hello. Uh, so I, I am almost done with Psycho Bitches, by the way. Hey. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to have Annie try out for Shetty because she's a really difficult character to play. Yeah. And also sound sexy as a man. <laughs> um, very difficult because she's she should have like she should have like quite a range as far as yeah. pitch to her voice. And I can only like stay in one particular range and sound, you know, even remotely femininely attractive. So <laughs> I, I think I think Annie's gonna do a better job for us. And considering it's just gonna be the one character for her. It shouldn't. It shouldn't uh, drag us down too much as far as scheduling. Cool. We had a one person comment, by the way. That's good. So Angus is getting himself a code. Where's hey, the, congratulations. Where Where are they commenting again? Uh, on Facebook. In the Harem Game Light group. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's an announcement at the top. And uh, oh yeah, I want to read this real quick, guys. Can I Can I just read something real yeah, quick? Yeah. It's not mine. Please do. Uh, it's one of those things. I just wanted to comment because why not? We're here. It's one of those things where you know, like everybody's writing about, oh, male write women like this, and it's ridiculous. And then uh, some woman wrote, uh, if female writers wrote characters of the opposite sex, like male writers do. Okay, here we go. He walked downstairs, noticing how his limp penis pressed against the front of his underwear, his nubile, ba nubile balls dangling hairily below. I just wanted to say, like, that's pretty much how we think. That's how guys are. Like, <laughs> like uh, come on. Women think like, oh, we don't think about our breasts. Like, but guys, that's yeah. Yeah, just, just I, a comment. I, def I definitely notice if my balls are stuck to the side of my leg. Like, <laughs> yeah, that I mean, will be have on my mind. There, it's gonna be on your brain happen. all the time. That's why it doesn't 100%. make sense that that's not. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where where'd you read that? Where was I'm that? I'm done. Some uh, <laughs> thread on. Uh, uh, oh, Michael Martin Martin. How do you say your name? He shared it uh, on Facebook. He's one of our cool guys in the group. So, yeah. All right. Well, here we go. Um, we're going to get into the scene. Just a reminder to you guys to um, uh, like and subscribe, like this video, join the Harem Gamelet, join SBTL uh, Facebook group. Like I say, this is a fantastic community full of people who care about the genre, care about the authors, and uh, care about each other. So if you want to hang out with us, the more the merrier. Jeff. Yeah, what? Book three. Okay. Chapter 15. Okay. The line we're starting with is suddenly, comma, she knelt at its side and pushed against the lid. You could probably find it with suddenly, comma, she knelt. Uh, Wait, which book is this? Book three? This is book three. Um, this scene was suggested by Richard Dillman. Uh, so Richard, you are going to be getting a code tonight. And uh, he suggested this scene because it's his favorite, uh, because the scene, you know, meeting his mom, uh, finally best part and brought a tear to his eye. Uh, so thank you very much, Richard, for leaving your comment. And um, we're gonna narrate that for you. Yeah, and if you guys don't cry right now, it's probably because you haven't read the rest of the book. So that's so yeah, exactly. <laughs> or or because you're laughing at my renditions of the ladies. Yeah, one of the two. Now, hopefully, they're crying for laughter at that point. But yeah, <laughs> if we if we can make someone cry tonight, huh. I mean, that'd be that'd hot. Be that'd be hot. Audio code. Yeah. Audio code. If you actually cry, but not everybody though. Just the first, the first one to cry. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, beautiful. Okay, so I just want are you ready, Jeff? Know. Yeah. Excellent. We shall do this now. And you're going to play everybody except for Chad. Okay. Suddenly, she knelt at its side and pushed against the lid. I wasn't sure what she was doing and definitely didn't want to find a dead body in there, but helped regardless. The lid came off to reveal a super lying in there, wires and cables connected to her arms and legs, her arms and neck. She looked up at us with eyes of pure white, 
thrashing and shouting, lashing out with the wires connected to her and light shooting out in every direction. She froze suddenly, the light coming to a stillness over our heads. In it, images appeared. We could see the top of the pyramid, the sky with clouds floating past, and then something broke through the clouds. A ship, followed by more ships. Ranger has arrived. She hissed, and then collapsed. We pulled her from the box, the wires and cables coming off easily, only leaving marks where they seemed to have connected, but not fully penetrated her body. What is this? I asked. Don't you see it? Twitch replied. Her face. It's the same one we saw on the wall. This is the woman who needed help, and who was, I assume, helping us. <clears throat> Through this device... Gail added, walking along the edge of the sarcophagus. Somehow, being in here lets you control the pyramid. So why not have Daos just plug himself in? I asked. Isn't it Daos? Daos. Daos. Right. I'm guessing it's less about control and more about becoming one with the pyramid. Twitch said, scanning it, and then Gail. She frowned, then repeated the process only this time scanning me after the box. That explains why she was able to fight back at least. She must have sensed your presence, must have known it was you somehow. I shook my head in confusion. Your mother, Breaker, Charm said, as she knelt on the floor holding the newly released woman on her lap. Right? Twitch nodded. No way. I turned to the woman and knelt beside her. Mom? The woman... My mom turned to me, her eyes barely fluttering open and then closing again. Her lips twitched, and then she muttered, We have to leave. We must. How? I asked. Her brow furrowed, her nose scrunched, and then her eyes burst open, no longer all white but brown, like looking in the mirror. Those eyes. We have to destroy the pyramid, but first, defeat Ranger. Get rid of them. End this place. Break free. When Twitch spoke the words, I already knew what needed to be done. You're the only one, Breaker. You have to go in. You've seen what it did to her, I pointed out. Me getting in there means getting out will be that much more difficult. Not necessarily, Andromeda argued. She's been at this a long time and is likely weakened by that. You'll do what needs to be done but have us out here fighting for you, helping you. If we work together, with one of us here to release you at the right time, we can pull this off. The maybe part was in her eyes, but I left it alone. I'll do it, I said, and took a deep breath to build up my courage. Andromeda nodded. Thank you, Twitch. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Twitch, the key to the powers of the Tier Ones is here but you'll have to use your powers to figure out a way to reverse it. We need to take the stolen powers with us in case we, need, we, in case we meet those who they belong to. You think they're still alive? Out there somewhere? Twitch out there asked. somewhere? Sorry. Twitch asked. Andromeda didn't answer, but instead said, See what you can do. The rest of us will do our best to hold off the enemy with our boy here. It was decided. As I stepped in, the lights moved around me like glittering snow, all converging on my chest and then spreading out. I lowered myself inside and the cables and wires took me, becoming one with me. And then I was in. Images of tunnels and various rooms flashed before me, grew into my consciousness, and then it was done. I was one with the pyramid. Scene. Boom. That's the scene. And after that is the most uh, dungeon core you'll ever see me write, probably, because I'm not a dungeon core author. But I snuck some in. That was sick. Did I ever ask you about the uh, Dungeons and Dragons? Whether or not this was similar to a Dungeons and Dragons campaign? Uh, not that I know of. Oh, okay. I played a a D and D. Um, uh, one shot that Gary G Gygax wrote for his players, mm -hmm. and he basically wrote it as like. It's a pyramid and it is basically a death trap. It's just a crazy death trap designed to frustrate and kill off his players' characters. Nice. 
So there's yeah, traps sure there's everywhere. And... Pyramid type things. <laughs> in our Minecraft <laughs> book, we have an upside down pyramid that uh, is a lot of fun. That like has all these weird uh, mazes in it and whatnot. You know, lots of fun times. But uh, so I think I just have a pyramid theme going on in my head here. There you go. There you go. Maybe you were a pharaoh in a previous life. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Probably. Probably. Beautiful. So there you go. There's the scene. Did anybody cry? Do we have any <laughs> criers? Yeah. Preston Yarley says that uh, he'll shed some tears. You're all oh, Richard Cruz is already <laughs> already crying. You're all heartless. <laughs> Monsters. Uh, you got to be in the zone. I know the feeling. You're like sitting there just reading a book. I'm going to do a shout out actually real quick if you guys don't mind. It's um, I was reading uh, Kick by John L. Monk. And uh, I was up to like three in the morning reading that book. And it, yeah, it got me. I was just like at the end of it. I'm just like, yes, yes. <laughs> it was good. You got to read it. Kick. Anyway, yeah good stuff i haven't heard of it ah it's fun it's a yeah who is it by uh john l monk he's a not a harem or gamelet author um yet oh. maybe i don't know <laughs> Ooh. The, the jenkins cycle yeah it's really fun it's, it's like a head hopping thing a guy head hops into different bodies and has to stop serial killers from doing crazy stuff basically oh, cool yeah Anyway, I don't, it's not related at all, but just like the one <laughs> book I can remember that made me kind of teary eyed. You know? Yeah. I, I, I've never heard of the, uh, the narrator, Steve uh, Fellin. Oh. I, I, I think I read it. I didn't listen to the audiobook, but oh, okay. no, I do have the audiobook mm -hmm. also. I bought, I liked it so much. I bought the audiobook, you know? Um, oh, least, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Uh, I don't know. I've definitely cried. Oh, Harry Potter. I cried when I was reading Harry Potter <laughs> for sure. Um, Which scene do you remember? Oh God! Too long ago. Maybe when Hedwig died. I only read the series once, and like I did it in like a weekend. I'd never read it, and then my girlfriend at the time was like, "Okay, you've got to read them. You got to read them. They're so much better than the movies." I was like, "Fine," and uh, I got to like book four, like, and it took me like two months to get to book four, and then like from five onwards, I just plowed through them in a weekend. Yeah. I actually read book five before any of the rest and it was so good. And I was like, all right, I'm hooked. <laughs> <laughs> so everything else was just a prequel. Yeah. To five. Made it fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, perfect. So uh, once again, that was a suggestion from Richard Dillman. So congratulations. You're going to be getting a code. We'll send you a message on Facebook tonight. Um, who else we got there? Jamie. Well, we have another scene from you too, right? Uh, but but, for, yes. but also we have a few commenters up here. And I think two of them commented on the same scene, if I'm, maybe I'm mistaken, but they're both about charm in book one, like when you first meet charm in book one. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, so how are we going to do that? If, is it the same scene? Are we going to have to uh, deny someone a code until they come up with a different scene? Or, I'm not uh, sure if it's the same scene. I didn't pull it up to look. It's chapter three of book one, and then another one says the scene where he meets Charm for the first time. And I know that's either chapter two or chapter three, but I don't recall. Right. Uh, okay. All right. Well, then you guys are going to get some Charm tonight. Um, beautiful. Uh, yeah. What, well, we'll stay in order, I guess. Um, we had someone else asking for book three as well. And... Oh, yeah. This is at See, the end of the book, right? Where Charm is like, I won't ruin it, but yeah, the Charm's a moment. Is it another tearjerker? I feel like it's another tearjerker <laughs> scene. Maybe that's the one where they said they cried, actually. I don't remember, but yeah. Yeah, I think both were kind of tearjerker scenes. Why don't we you save this one? that way. If they haven't been reading along, it's not going to have the same impact, but yeah. <laughs> very con very con Oh, 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 okay. Here's what we'll do. We'll read Charm, and then... We'll circle back. Ooh. We'll like we'll introduce charm, and then we'll do the you know that scene. She doesn't die. For people who are wondering, I don't kill her in uh, book three. Uh, so oh, in book three, why specify in book three? Don't, yeah, don't kill her in book three. Oh. I don't kill her in book three. Okay. <laughs> Everybody's like, nah, no, don't worry. I'm not George R. R. Martin. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, so, real quick, Barry Compton says I laughed and got slightly aroused then oh. cried that's <laughs> that makes a lot of sense because you know like yes. if he actually got aroused by my female voices mm -hmm. tried mm -hmm. <laughs> that's funny it's like why wow <laughs> yeah. well um 
that's a lot of emotions to go through in like uh wait let me try let me try it <laughs> huh. uh, like that right <laughs> what was the middle one <laughs> <laughs> do that middle one again i can't huh. i can't even remember how that you're aroused is that the moment huh. i don't know i don't know i had to think of a really fast an obvious way to seem aroused. Oh, so I checked. The scenes are not the same. Uh, okay. The two scenes they requested. One is when we first meet Charm, and one is when we first have a little fun with Charm. Oh, I see. Okay, so uh, here's the order. We'll jump to book one, and we'll do when we first meet Charm. All right. And then we will do... We'll save the fun bit for the end. So meet Charm, tearjerker with Charm, fun with Charm, what do you think, Jamie? That sound good? Hey, right. Okay. So what is this scene? What's the first scene for uh, Charm? Um, we meet her. Chapter. I think it's chapter two. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Somebody tell us. Oh, I think I got it. Okay. Uh, Probably the so first time it? they say Foxy. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, right here. Um, I spun eyes searching might be a good place to start. I spun, comma, eyes oh, searching. There we go. Got it. All right. So here we go. And uh, who suggested this one? Uh, who was it? Uh, that is there. Nathan Michael McIntyre, which was the third person to comment. So I guess I went out of order on that one as far as awarding codes. But uh, I might have an extra code or two also in case we run out. So Sorry, guys. <laughs> I, I had to re-download the book. Okay. So uh, what's what's the – what am I searching for again? Uh, so it's chapter two, I believe. Yeah. And the line is, I spun, comma, eyes searching. This is a good scene. Got it. Okay. I spun, eyes searching, but all I saw was a wall. My frown should have made it plain how annoyed I was, but, oh yeah, they couldn't see me, whoever they were. There's nobody that I started, then saw the ripple in the air, the change in the way the metal moved at just under eye level. Air. Who sent you? A female voice asked. It sounded like it was right in front of me, from where I'd seen the ripple. Having seen the info screen on the others, I willed it up for her, and the screen popped up for only me to see. Moniker? Charm. Status? Supervillain. Imprisoned. Special powers? Cloaking? Charming. Notes? Don't call her Foxy. Foxy? I asked, more to myself, and then... Bam! Something hit me in the nose, and I fell back, red spots in my vision. And then I saw a woman who was as sexy as they came. Her cute little nose was framed by narrow yet large eyes, green eyes, thick lines of eyeshadow, or maybe it was natural, framed her eyes. Her outfit clung to her perky breasts and hips, not leaving much to the imagination. Then I noticed something furry behind her and started scooting back, stammering as I pointed. Watch out! She turned... And when she looked at me again, the annoyance in her expression was clear. That's when I noticed the furry ears sticking out of her hair. Not human ears, more like those of a fox. And when she turned to walk off, I saw that the thing I'd thought to be a monster or a strange alien was, in fact, a bushy tail. What. The. Fuck. Way to go, Hotshot. The voice said. Oh, this is uh, Jin. Oh, uh, okay. Way to go, hotshot. The voice said. I pushed myself up, clearing my head. Oh, what should I call you? Jin again. What? The voice said. So that I can tell you to go to hell. I need a name. That's really not funny, considering, you know, how close we are to death. You can call me Jin, though. Zin? Like, Sin? I shook my head. Wow. No, Jin like Jin, actually. Jin replied. 
and you're losing your one chance at surviving this place. I advise you to get up. You said we? I pointed out as I stood, rotating my neck to listen up. Ah, yes. The reason you can see the information on the others there, and get your biotech clothes. Call her Lamb. Uh, wait, so I'm wearing her? I glanced down at my crotch, suddenly feeling very odd about the whole situation. Not exactly. More like her essence. I'm not sure that's much better, I replied, adjusting my crotch and then freezing mid-action. She says to never do that again. I felt the blood flooding my cheeks, even as the voice said he was joking. Not funny at all. Done with this, I turned in the direction I'd seen the foxy lady storm off and followed. There was no sign of her, but at this point I knew from the character info that she had cloaking, so I knew what to look for. A shimmer at the far door. Wait, I said, picking up the pace. She uncloaked and turned to me, still glaring. It took me a second to process that bushy tail and those ears again, but I did my best not to look, instead focusing on her cute little nose. Stay back. I bite. She warned me. I I'm not trying to hurt you, I replied. You? Hurt me? <laughs> she laughed, but then looked around cautiously as if people might have heard her. <laughs> Listen, bub. There are way scarier monsters in this place than you. I can tell that much with a glance. I, hey, I protested. Of course, she was right, but she didn't have to rub it in. For your information, I just took down some guy with wings. I didn't add the fact that it was while running for my life or that it was by accident. That could be one of the three people that come to mind. mind. She replied, eyeing me suspiciously. And I highly doubt that you'd be able to get to any of them. Yeah, well, it happened. Done. And now his buddies are after me, and I think you're the only person I can trust in here. I glanced back for effect, trying to hide the panic that was creeping into my voice. It was like I was realizing the truth of it all as I was saying it. Some crazy motherfuckers were going to hunt me down and destroy me, probably after some in insane torture. Damn, I was so fucked. Why me? She asked. <clears throat> what? For all you know, I'm as crazy as they come. Every one of us here is a supervillain, right? That's what the judges said anyway. So how do you know I won't cut off your head and suck out your spinal fluid? Oddly, the way she pursed her lips after saying that made me think of sucking something that was very much not my spinal fluid. Of her sucking something. <laughs> her sucking something. I was like, sucking her lips? What, does he want to suck her lips? There we go. Which lips? And then I had both images mixing around in my mind and was very much confused. And that's where we're going to end it. Yeah. The next one, by the way, is the beginning of chapter three, I believe. The beginning of chapter three. Oh, perfect. Okay. Um, well, yeah, might as well do it. Might as well do it now. We're already in uh, book three. Um, yeah. So, uh, congratulations. No, we're in Nathan. book one. Oh, yeah. sorry. Book one. Three. Uh, congratulations, Nathan, Michael McIntyre. Um, you're getting an audio code, audio book code. Um, and we'll send you a direct message. Message. We'll send you a direct message after the stream. Anal bum cover. Anal bum cover. I don't think we have to go too far in this scene. I think just giving a little, little taste of it is fun to like see how little, weird it is. A little taste. Let's little give taste. you a little taste of this scene <laughs> uh, here. Hey. <laughs> oh, and this one is. I like. Uh, I like how I I was reading throbbing dick stiffen as you were saying that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's all the details I need. Uh, David all Nightshade, of... by the way. <laughs> David Nightshade is the is is who suggested it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, David. Nightshade. Um, beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Well, then. Let's... By the way, the third scene that was a uh, recommended, which actually was the first one recommended, is also book one, chapter sixteen. I guess people like book one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a good book. Good. Some people very uh, memorable too. The 
prison ship. Yeah. All right. There we go. You ready? You ready? I almost called you not Jeff. Um, I don't respond to not Jeff. <laughs> Are you ready? Definitely Jeff? Yes. Oh, okay. Chapter three. Charm's eyes went wide and her breathing deepened as she stared at my cock. Her chest rose and fell in a way that made my throbbing dick stiffen beyond belief. This isn't right, she said, suddenly turning away and sucking in air so that the effect of her charm was pulled back from me. It's an abuse of my powers. I shouldn't have. A moment passed as my head cleared, and then I realized that I was suddenly there, or that I was standing there with my pants around my ankles, my massive erection exposed, and pointed right at her. I quickly pulled up my pants and stared at her in shock. Oh, what's happening here? I asked. She looked at me sheepishly, <laughs> bit her lip with a glance back at my crotch, and then sighed as she plopped back onto the side of the bed. You must hate me. What? I, I don't, uh, I don't even know you, I protested. Sure, you threatened to pop my nuts, then basically drugged me so that I exposed myself. All very weird. But I don't hate you. Hell, at least you're not charging after me with your head on fire. You met Draconis? She asked, suddenly fascinated. Was it amazing? Was he like the legends say? It was like a brief instant of him trying to kill me, I said, shaking my head. Can we stay on topic here? <sighs> right. She sighed, then laid back on the bed, filling me with a whole new set of fantasies that I quickly tried to push aside. As I said, I'm Charm. There's a lot about me you don't know. Like everything, I said. <sighs> right. Well, here's the quick version. Went to the all-girl academy for superheroines. Went to the all-girl academy for superheroines. Superleans, since my parents gave me up at an early age. Guess they didn't understand the ears and tail. Go figure. She glanced over at me, looking vulnerable. Things happened. I ended up here. There you have it. Things happened. Yes. She nodded, looking away. Things happened. And this, I asked, pointing at my crotch as I attempted to hide my massive boner. You can take care of it if you want, she said, gesturing to the sink. I laughed. <laughs> Excuse me? If you want, I'm just saying. Go ahead. I mean, no, I don't need to... It was bursting, and my head was swimming with lack of blood. So maybe I did, but I wasn't about to do that in front of some stranger. What I'm trying to ask is, what the fuck? And see. Yes. For people who are wondering, uh, that, that, so her powers, I'm going to spoil a little bit more for people who don't know how her powers work yet. They work on Perfect. others, but they also work on her. So she originally charmed him to make him follow her and not be a problem. It also made her a little more susceptible. And then it became this like kind of snowball effect where uh, she's make, kind of drugging him, but drugging herself at the same time. So that's like some people commented in reviews like, this is bull crap. Like she's she's basically just drugging him and that's messed up. But she's kind of drugged herself. So she's not totally in the zone of like, oh, I'm going to drug him to play with the dick. You know, it's not exactly what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> but kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I feel like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That's a, uh, a tricky situation, I guess. But he's okay <laughs> with it, I guess. So I, I, I don't know. I probably would be too if some <laughs> fox lady drugged me yeah. and I woke up. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's like, oh, that happened? Yeah. Oh, I don't condone sweet. it, but if it happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. Uh, um, okay, so the next one is in book three again. Okay. And um, and we're going to be ending on a scene from book two. Um, but this one is from book three. It is chapter 20, right off the top. Do we want to do Angus's, by the way? Do we have time? Um, I should, it was chapter 16 of book one. Been with a man. I, don't, I haven't looked at it, but 
Oh, yeah. chapter 16 from book one. Uh, do we have time? Um, we might. What time is it? it right now it is 12 past. So if we can do, like, what's that? We got like 20 minutes, right? Yeah, we got 20 minutes. Cool. We can do it. Sweet. So let's jump to chapter 20. Then we're ju jumping to chapter two, or, or sorry, book two. Uh, and then we're going to jump back to book one and right. end with that. No more joking around. We're no more. Now. This is yeah. We got to <laughs> down to business. I got to be a Brass. boss lady right now. Oh well, then you're in luck because <laughs> chapter twenty involves a fox lady. Yeah. So this says been with a man is where it starts. Oh, chapter twenty been with a man. Oh no, sorry. This is book one sixteen. Are we doing that one or not? Oh, um, let's do it. Okay. So yeah, deeper. been with a man. Question. Been mark. with a man. Book one. She's talking with is Charm it Gale. Is it the top of 16? Uh, it's no. like the bottom, middle, middle, bottom. Three. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Wait. Um, so then this is from Angus, you said? Yes. And uh, this would have been number six, right? Would it have been? I've got uh, Richard Dillman. Um, uh, we've got one where Charm tells him she would have stayed that was on Richard Dillman's comment. Okay. Uh, Nathan Michael McIntyre, um, David Nightshade, Angus. Angus. Mm -hmm. So how many then, that That's five there. <laughs> okay. I feel like there was one more too. Oh, yeah, whoever um, suggested the original charm. Wait, never mind, never mind. I think we're at five. If I'm missing somebody, let me know. We'll hook you up. Don't worry, don't worry. Okay. <laughs> Been with a man. And this is Gail talking. Uh, can you describe Gail for Jeff? Gail is... Remember Gail. You remember oh, Gail? You do? Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. <clears throat> Ready? Well, let's do this. Been with a man? Gail laughed. Gail laughed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course. I just don't like to limit myself. Uh, see, me and my friend, uh, Charm over there, we were wondering, um, neither of us knows how to, you know, go down on a guy. I'm sorry, but where's this going? It's just that... We didn't know who to ask, and... Gail was shaking her head, totally caught off guard by this horrible tactic of twitches, even starting to inch toward the door. I nudged Charm, and she darted over to intercede. Sorry for my friend, Charm said. It's just that Breaker here really has the most beautiful cock ever, and we think it would be so hot if you'd put it in your mouth. What the fuck? Gail said, voicing the thought in my own head. These women had no idea what they were doing. No, it's not weird. Just, you know, take out a stick, put it in your mouth, play with it a bit until he orgasms. Don't you like that idea? You're fucking crazy. You're nuts. I'm not. Charm said, fists clenching, clearly losing focus here. Gail took a step toward the door, hands moving out as she prepared to use her powers. Time to intercede, I realized. Stop. Stop. I said, stepping over and motioning Charm and Twitch back. They looked at me skeptically, as if they'd been punished, before moving to the other side of the room. <sighs> I'm sorry about them. Sorry doesn't quite cover it, she said. You all did some good work out there. I respect that. Then this happens. It's not at all what you think. Why are they so intent on this? She asked, glancing at my crotch and then quickly away. You paid them to try and put me up to this? Do you have some weird mind control powers over them or something? I sighed, shook my head, and tried to come up with something. No good explanation came to mind, but telling her the truth didn't seem like a good idea. Listen, I, it's not really for me, I said, trying a new tactic. I'm supposed to believe that. Who's the winner here? Me? 
It's Twitch. She's in love with me. I lowered my voice to ensure Twitch didn't hear this. Uh, but her sexuality, it's different, okay? She really wants to please me, but just can't get turned on without watching a stranger go down on me. I didn't even want this. Not that I wouldn't love it. I, I mean, sure, I would, but I wouldn't feel right about it. Well, I wouldn't accept that I'm willing to do it for her. Gail stared at me, brow furrowed, then turned to Twitch, who waved uncertainly. It's kind of sweet, Gail said, in a very twisted way. You're sure about this? For her? My breath came heavy, my throat itching, so I simply nodded. She cocked her head, looking at me in a new light, then said, Okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah? Charm said, apparently hearing that part. Gail nodded again, as if trying to pump herself up, and then said, Go ahead, take it out. I was there, what do you think? Huh? Huh? Yeah, that's a perfect place to stop. <laughs> that's a good scene. I like that scene. Whoever wrote that? <laughs> Great stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now back to chapter 20 of book three, right? Now yeah. back to chapter 20 of book three. Yes. Book three. I see why reviews call me a perverted teenage boy, but uh, <laughs> I, I, whatever, it's fun. <laughs> People have been called worse. Yeah. All right, top of, tra top of chapter 20. Top of chapter 20. Yep, the top. Can we take it from the top? All right. And, uh, oh, this was suggested to us from... Uh, um, oh, yeah, so this is suggested by J. Chestnut Mine. Oh, sorry, J. Chestnut. Oh. <laughs> Mine, Mine is from the... <laughs> yeah. uh, so congratulations, uh, J. Chestnut. You're going to be getting a code today. Okay. Here we go. Chapter 20. Stepping out onto Juno's after we'd been through, after what we'd been through felt like a return home. That this place, a planet I'd only been on for a short battle and follow-up feast, should feel like any sort of home was beyond disturbing. Charm was once again acting sort of strange, so I pulled her aside and asked her what was up. Nothing to do with this place this time. Charm assured me. No? It's that we almost lost you back there. I mean, for a bit I thought you weren't coming out of that sarcophagus. She ran a hand along my arm, staring into my eyes. I would have stayed with you. Died at your side. <laughs> Please don't do that, I said with a nervous chuckle. If I'm dying... Get the hell out of there and live so you can avenge me someday. Please. She grinned, hugged me, and said, I'm glad it wasn't necessary either way. But I definitely would choose to die at your side. Sorry, it's more romantic. Let Twitch or one of the others avenge both of us. <laughs> Deal. I kissed her, and we picked up the pace to catch up with the others. And I think that's... Was that it? The that's the scene, yeah. That's the gist of it, yeah. That's that's yeah. Oh. Okay, I would have so stayed. Mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna uh fulfill a request real quick. Pancakes! Sorry. Uh, someone someone asked for it. Um Pan I, did a, I did a little half assed one. Yeah. yeah. Little half assed pancakes? Yeah, a little one. Was that what I think, I think clear, there's no pancakes in this book. I, yeah, there are <laughs> it's just, I know that they probably recognized that I was using her, ah. voice, her voice for charm. So. Oh, <laughs> whose voice is that again? That's Andrea from Super Sales and Superheroes. So. You, you know, I've noticed something that's interesting is like uh, a lot of books have like a, a food that they focus on, right? Like yeah. uh, Michael Anderle's books does Coke, Coca-Cola. And so like all his readers are Coca-Cola posting all the time. And if you post Pepsi, you're out. If uh, his new one has donuts and then there's the, the one with pancakes and then yeah. somebody else did waffles. And then yeah. 
Yeah, it's like a thing. I, I think yours is just Cox. <laughs> right. The best food out there. The best food there is. Uh, yeah. Somebody might comment what mine is if they want to, and they'll earn an applause from me because I do have something in the book that's not Cox. <laughs> oh, like something that connects all of your books? Uh, yeah, really? a food thing that Charm is obsessed with. Um, oh, what is Charm yeah. obsessed with? Oh, not pizza. No. Come on. Uh, pizza in space? That's just weird. <laughs> what is it? I feel like I should know this. Yeah. I should. Like somebody should comment. Oh. People commented in my private group, but that doesn't count. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to remember. It's not chocolate. It's mangoes? No. Some sort of fruit. Um, is that is that right? Is that right? No, no, I, no hints, no hints, no hints. No, let's see if somebody comments by the end of before we sign off. It looks it looks like in the chat they're getting it. Oh, cool. What? Well, should we give it away then? It's already getting it. We give it away. Give it away. Give it away now. Good. Oh right, yeah. Okay, give it away, Good Jamie. Job. It's carrot cake frosting. Not carrot cake, uh, but just the frosting. It's so good. Ah, uh, it is good. <laughs> cream cheese frosting. Cream yeah. cream cheese frosting is ridiculous. I never would have been sold on carrot cake if it weren't for the frosting. <laughs> of course, it's just basically uh, what's that other kind of bread that's the same thing made out of some kind of green vegetable? You know? Oh, um, no, um, <laughs> zucchini, zucchini yeah, loaf. Yeah, zucchini bread. It's basically oh, yeah. zucchini loaf at that point. Yeah, zucchini yeah. squash, same thing. So it's just like, why, why, why make this into a loaf? Why would this? Oh, this is fucking good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, pineapple's kind of one. Well, she's got like a taste thing for pineapple. Pineapple upside down cake is mentioned at least once, I believe. Uh, and then there's a the pineapple. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay. I remember what you're talking about too. Yes, you are yeah, correct. Yeah. Sure. Um, that was Benjamin, Benjamin Wagner pointed that out on uh, yeah. on job. YouTube. Um, so we have one more, and this is technically um, six. Was Wait, Angus. Which one was Angus? Which one did he suggest? I think we decided it was five, and that was... All right, maybe. But anyway, he was the one that was from book one, chapter 16, been with a man with Gail and uh, Twitch. Oh, okay. Uh, so the one I remembered was the one that I mentioned at the beginning, that there was one uh, scene that we had done in a um, different SBTL. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought that we could redo it tonight. Mm. Just for Here kicks. Yeah. Can we do it justice? That's <laughs> up to you, Jeff. We can do it. What what's All the right. scene? Uh so the scene is from book two. And um, I don't know, Jamie, if you're able to find it quickly. Um the scene is from book two, and it's when uh, the main character Chad meets a, a new super named Shimmer. The um what is her power? She can go invisible or no, she can um change her illusions. appearance. Basically. Yeah, illusions. Um, so, uh, but yeah, so he meets her and, um, tries to convince her to join the team and the way to join the team in the supers universe, obviously is to, uh, share bodily fluids somehow. Um, and yeah, he gets his powers from her, but maybe not in the way that you'd expect in that yeah. scene. Um, it starts with, uh, just curious is all. Just comma curious is all. I replied, and that's right. in chapter toward the bottom of chapter five, middle middle slash bottom. Just got it. Curious. Uh, we could probably do a short version of that. Yeah. Or all right, Shimmer. Okay, how am I going to do her voice? Okay, I think I just can. just don't say anything, and we'll. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> A uh, little self jab there for us. Little self jab. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, here we go. Okay. So then it starts with my line. Uh, just curious is all. Maybe you should just, just, let's just go to two paragraphs before the hell. The what, sorry? From like just two up. Two lines up. The hell? The yeah. hell? I mumbled. Yeah. The hell? Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, the hell? I mumbled, confused by that. 
everything okay? Shimmer asked. Just curious is all. I replied, swiping over to the next skill tree. This was a new one, and it showed that I could indeed use illusion illusions. <clears throat> and the skill tree looked like it would allow me to cast larger illusions with different levels to them. Early ones would be only visible, but more advanced illusions could even include physical manifestations, which I didn't what I started with ugh, what I started with didn't feel so different from the illusion I'd gained as a twisted version of Charm's cloaking. But the fact that it could get physical, too, carried with it all sorts of possibilities. For fights alone, that would be sweet. But I started to imagine what it could mean in the bedroom. Pushing that from my mind, I tried to focus on changing my appearance to look like one of the guys in the kung fu outfits who had attacked us. Only my cock was hard again, and I couldn't get my mind off of it. Suddenly, Shimmer was cracking up, laughing loud. I turned to see her looking away, covering her eyes as she laughed. <laughs> what? I asked. <laughs> Try to do better at keeping your mind focused when you make an illusion. She said. And please, <laughs> don't think about your dick. I froze, realizing the horror of what I'd done. Looking around, I noticed one of the pools of water and ran over to it. Sure enough. When I looked into it, I didn't see my reflection, but a huge version of my erect penis staring back at me. Ah! I shouted, instantly dismissing the illusion. Hey, if it's that big, you've got your dad beat. She said with a laugh. <laughs> Terrifyingly so. Shut up, please! And that's where we'll end it. Cool. Yeah! I like that scene. <laughs> it's, a, it's a repeat repeat request, so somebody likes it, in addition to you, at least. Two, two other people, <laughs> at least. I mean. uh, there is one more request, but I don't know how you guys are doing on time. Uh, if we want uh, to it, we, it looks like it is time to wrap it. It's cool. 630. We will tell we him. We got to wrap it up. We got to wrap it up. We got to wrap that dick up, you know. Wrap it up. Double bag it. S double bag it, and then sell it at Farm Boy? What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> I just love it. So, yeah, you guys don't have farm boy grocery stores down in the States. So, yeah, it's funny to me. <laughs> um, okay, well, thank you very much, um, Jamie Hawk, Jeff Hayes, for joining me tonight. Oh, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some camera work. Let me say that again. Thank you very much, Jamie Hawk, hey. Jeff Hayes. Oh, what did, what did you say? No, just, just give it a hey. A hey. Hey, Jeff Hayes. Oh, and my name is Justin Thomas James. Do not forget to uh, like and subscribe to the video. And also thank you guys for watching, for joining us today. Uh, everybody who suggested um, scenes, if you joined us, but um, your scene wasn't picked or whatever, thank you anyways for joining. We'll be doing another one of these um, uh, with Jamie Hawk in the future, hopefully, maybe with some other different authors as well. So uh, we will keep you posted on that. Uh, don't forget to join those groups, join our community, join the awesomeness. That is the Harem Game Lit SBT people community folks. <laughs> and uh, I think that's it for my ending spiel. Are we good to wrap this up? Uh, Jamie, you got anything? Yeah, I just wanted to again say thank you, everybody. Uh, we got four and five out now uh, for ebook, and I'm sure audio will hopefully not follow too far behind. Uh, I'm going to start six before too long. I kind of want to try to coordinate it to come out around the same time as either four or five. So we'll see, depending on how that all goes. But uh, stay tuned. I have cool things planned. I'm still working on the cover. People who are in the know know that I had a cover artist who did a few attempts and it just wasn't there. So uh, I want to get it perfect for you all. So stay tuned. Good. Uh, I have just a couple things to pimp out. Um, of course, obviously go pick up Supers 3 now that it's ready. Now that <laughs> you actually hear Shimmer. Uh, but we have an avalanche of releases coming our way. It's already started. Viridian Gate Online side quests, the short story anthology, um, is out now. It just came out yesterday. Star Nova Online Book Zero just came out today um, by Noah Barnett. Uh, if if you guys don't know, it's like a, a new series he's starting, and this is like a prequel to all of it. This is like the tutorial missions 
for uh, Starnova Online. So go check those out on Audible. And uh, of course, Soundbooth Theater is sponsored by Studio Bricks. That is the type of sound booth I'm in right now. They're sleek, they're good looking, and they're easy to put together. So go to studiobricks.com if you are an aspiring narrator or voice actor and uh, get started there. And I think that's it. That's dope. It. That is it from all of us. Um, we should have a sign off. We should. We need to like write one. We we write should spot, we should we should like search for some authors around here. I don't to know write us. Uh, I wish we knew an author. <laughs> I, wish, I wish. I wish we knew. How do you meet author? authors? <laughs> I know some guys who do ditties or whatever you call those little song things. So. Uh, jingles. 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 We need From jingle. my booth to your booth, it's Sound Booth Theater. Bam. Goodbye, folks. Done. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next time. Good night.